Hi folks, I'm, I'm Aslin Blore from AZ Entertainment. You can just see the back of AJ at the moment, but uh, don't you worry about it, just ignore that and pay attention on me. To me, <laughs> on me, whatever. Um, so, we're back for another episode of Fun Fabulous Food Down Under. AJ's back fresh from her trip all around Australia. They just had Australia Day, but I'll let her tell you all about it later. Now, we have got a hangout yeah. virgin. Let me go over to him and get him to introduce himself to you. Say hello to Chef Benjamin Foster, everybody. Foster, right? Fisher, 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 Fisher. Fisher. Oops. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chef Benjamin. Um, I live in the south of France, um, and I supply food for little events, um, marriages, uh, local events like that. And I also grow a lot of my own food and produce my own meat. Great. I love the picture of John Lennon at the back there. Oh, everyone should have a picture of John Lennon. We love, we love John Lennon. We love John Lennon, definitely. So we're going to get um, we're going to get Ben to come and cook for us at some point. Um, Ben's been a friend of um, AZ Entertainment for a while now, but we're waiting for his internet connection to get up. We to certainly speak. are. <laughs> yes. Right, sounding good. Sounding good. Okay. Cool. Right. We're going to. Oh, hello, AJ. We're over to you now. Okay. I'm making roti. Do you think the one thing I forgot was my rolling pin? Do you think I can put my finger on my rolling pin? No. Ah, I have a bottle of wine. That will work. Now, I'm going for all of those, for all of you who have joined us. Now, you know it won't be a fun, fabulous food down under if AJ doesn't forget something. So here we go. <laughs> Over to you, AJ. So what? tell us tell us what roti is. Okay, roti is a flatbread, and it is the most incredible thing to make. Because if you ever wake up in the morning and you've got no bread and the baker is shut or um, you just can't be bothered going out, you can just whip some up and it's great with curry but it's also fantastic if you have it with something like um, jam or Vegemite or whatever. So it's a great, it's a great filler. Excellent. And, um, yeah, so today we're going to do, um, it's, it's great to have Ben, Chef Ben on and today we're going, I've been away over Anzac Day and and travelling around and I spent some time at a very, very, very um, beautiful farm which is the only humane choice farm that I know of and they've got fabulous free range chicken and fabulous free range ducks and geese and it's been a marvellous, marvellous experience and I've brought some back with me. This is a little Pusano spatchcock. It's a one kilo, one kilo chicken. And what I've done is I've just broken it down into quite a few pieces. I'll show you how to do that on another show. But because we're doing the bread and the curry, I'll just get on with it. I'll put the. I'll also. I put a photo up of um, some of the ingredients. Okay. Can I? Can I? Sorry, AJ, I'm just going to have to interrupt you because sometime between us setting up and going live, the iPad seemed seem to have um, gone up a little bit. So can we just tilt it down? Is it possible at all so we can see the ingredients on the uh, counter? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. No, I'll, 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 mm. Okay. Yeah, I'll hold that up. Okay, and look at that screen. I love that screen. Now, if you, if you recall, that's perfect, AJ. That is absolutely perfect. Yeah, we'll and it's see. just, just sounds just coming up now. Yeah, that's why I put the screen there because it's a problem with filming, and I need to cook over in this area. So you can see you can see the ingredients now. So we've got lovely chicken, and we've got onion, a mixture of garlic and ginger. We've got um, a bit of brown sugar because not everybody has palm sugar. Some mm -hmm. black pepper and a curry powder that I've made up, and I'll give you the recipe for that. But the first thing that we really need to do is we need to get the spices in the pan. So I'm using a vegetable oil, but you can pretty well use whatever you like. And just a good, a good lug of it, because it needs to be able to um, fry off the spices and, and fry off the curry powder, and you need to be able to just um, mix, mix those through. Um, so we're, but we're going to start with the onion and the garlic and ginger. It's a really, really easy recipe. Not so it's a shame easy. We can't that smell I can't. it, AJ. Hey? It's a shame we can't smell this. It is a shame, and it 
would be really, really clever of me if I brought across some utensils. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's just behind you this time, so that's okay. I'm just we're just we're just gonna say hello to a few people. Here we go. Um, Bruno Miguel Santos says he can grab you a rolling pin if you like. Um, <laughs> Billy Billy Bass Billy Bass is is here as well. He's he's from Essex, um, Benjamin, and um, okay. he loves his chilies. And, and we've got MJJ Namal Diaz from Sri Lanka and Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is also a chef in the US. Okay, in the US. Yeah. Now, yeah. these have been going and they're, they're okay. They're, they're not, they'll just soften up as the other things go off. Now, these are beautiful, fresh curry leaves. Now, there's every chance you won't find them fresh wherever you are, but that's okay. Um, but... What if you can't get them fresh? Get the dry ones, or use use a basil, wouldn't you say, Asa? Basil for curry leaves. Um, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, obviously they're, they're, it's not. They're very different. Yeah, it's not a substitute, but yes, I I I mean my my personal preference would be just to to finish it off with coriander leaves um, at the end. Well, yeah, exactly. Mm. But um, quite often you'll find with the dried curry leaves that you don't get that much flavour. No, no. When I do my product, I use dried curry, leaf, curry leaves, but I've, I've hand dried them myself, mm. so there's lots of flavour in them. No, I, 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 I think it's a great idea using bay leaves. What do you think, Ben? Um, yeah, no, obviously, you know, you get quite a lot of flavour out of basil and bay leaves and things mm. like that, um, but I don't think there is a substitute for curry leaves. It's a, it's a no, very there different really. flavour. Did we say basil or did we see, say bay? What did I say? I can't remember what I said. AJ said bay, I think. What did I say? <laughs> I think I said basil. That's okay. not bay, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So I've just put a couple of chilies in there because this curry is more aromatic than hot. Mm -hmm. But if you want it to be hot, just use more chili. It's not a problem at all. And then what type got... of chili would you use, AJ, for your curry, for this particular curry? What kind of chili? Yeah, is there any I'm, particular I'm... would you use a bird's eye or...? Yeah, I'm just using dry bird's eye, ones that I've dried myself. And I'm just going to put in now some mustard seed and some cardamom, some cloves and some um, cinnamon bark. Mm. And I'm going to throw a star anise in because um, in the absence of using uh, somp or, or fennel, Mm, mm. Star, star okay. anise does, star anise does, uh, does come into its own in curries as well, in Chinese food too. That's um, right. Are all Fijian curries spicy? Um, they're all aromatic. Mm. Um, like south, um, like south in. Hot. You mean spicy as in hot? Yeah, I mean as in as in yeah, hot. Yeah. Um, no, but um, it's not uncommon if something isn't hot enough for you to. Have sure. Chilies and yeah. Sure. So you can oh, also add it to your yes. own flavour or your own taste. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. The other day, I, I was thinking. Now I read somewhere that a chili a day is a good thing for you, and I thought, oh, okay, that's a good idea. So I was walking past the chili bush, and I thought, oh, I'll just eat one of those. So I just took one and I threw it down. I didn't chew it up, obviously. I'm just putting in the curry powder now, and that's that's a mix of. Um, Turmeric and cumin and coriander. Okay. Very similar to the masala? No. And it's also got um, it's also got my own um, Yeah, so that that'll Yeah, um, curry powders are curry powders are usually made up of turmeric, um, a little bit of white pepper or black pepper, um, coriander, cumin, yeah. And um, garam, do you do you use garam masala much um, in your cooking, AJ? Yes, I do. I was out of garam masala. Throw a yeah. teaspoon in. Yeah. Um, I've been away for ten days. <laughs> garam garam masala. I'll just I'll just um, mention this um, to the audience. Garam masala. Garam means um, warm masala. Obviously, you know what masala is. It's spices. Yep. So it's basically basically um, what you add to the end to add warmth to your dish. And it is so easily homemade with a bit, so easily homemade with a bit of um, nutmeg, cardamom, 
um, cinnamon, cumin. So I've basically I've got everything that you'd get in a garam masala there anyway, and I'm just putting a pinch of nutmeg in there. So um, so that's all good. And let me say when it comes to different brands of garam masala, they all vary a lot anyway, don't they? They do indeed. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's not so much. It's not, I'll just answer Ben, it's not so much, I guess, the brand as, as, I, as like I made a different masala, garam masala to uh, my cousin, you know, or, or, or my aunt, so yeah. to yeah. each his own. It depends on your chili, it depends on your yeah. ingredients to, you know, how fresh they are, yeah. how, they, how good they are, and Absolutely. obviously what they would Absolutely, bring forward. Absolutely, Ben. Absolutely, yeah. I've made these kind of bite-sizing pieces of chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have left things like the, the wings a bit bigger, but that's fine. So AJ, you've, added, you've, you've added, go on Ben. Sorry, uh, AJ, do you find that it's better to cook um, this type of curry with the legs, the thighs, the breasts? Um, what, what would you recommend? Well, it's an interesting thing that, that you ask because, just bear with me for one minute, because I, um, when I went, before I went to, before I had my Fiji husband, I would always use, um, I'm just putting some water in. Yeah. You can put stock in if you wish. Yeah, but we don't, don't uh, generally use stock in curry. I use, I use, yeah, I use the whole bird now. Mm. Before, because if you just use breast, you get a really quick, mm. you get a really, really quick curry, which is great. But if you use, the whole chicken, you get all that beautiful flavour out of the bones, Ben. Yeah, you get all so of the fat and everything that sort of goes into it. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I, I personally will... Okay. Um, I mean, I know I, when I cook a curry, I'm I'm very tempted to always use thigh pieces of meat yes, um, because absolutely. of the, the fat on the skin. Um, it does really improve the flavour and it also thickens the curry up. Mm, absolutely. absolutely. Absolutely, but I'd, I'd encourage you where possible to use the bones unless you've yeah. made a really good gelatinous stock. Mm. And, and, and bre breast meat is so bland and boring. Isn't it really? Yeah. And if you cook a curry and you overcook it, it's so dry. It can be so dry as well. Um, you know, if you can let a curry sit for a long, a lot longer of a time, you obviously improve on flavour anyway. As we know yeah. that anything that you eat the next day is always better than the day that you've cooked it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, on to roti. Watch out! Watch, watch out for that wine bottle when you do open it, though. <laughs> Watch out for that wine bottle when you do open it. I wonder if rolling it will make you, will will get you tipsy faster. It's actually a Margaret River, which is a lovely wine producing area. It's a Margaret River Sauvignon Blanc Sauvignon, which I don't drink. So, AJ, yeah, do the wine company recommend that you use them as uh, rolling pins? <laughs> <laughs> we we don't have them in Australia. We only use bottles. <laughs> oh dear. Now, nice. everybody is bamboozled by flatbreads. Um, whenever I go to Fiji, if I make roti, they go, ooh, you can make roti. It's not rocket science, trust me. What I've got in here is about a cup full of flour, but you can use as much flour as you want. I use a plain flour, a finer flour, the finer the flour, the better, okay? Um, and this is, I'm only making a little bit because if I make a lot, I'll just eat it. So um, I don't want to do that. Now, the thing, the thing with it is this. You need to put some ghee in it, or if you haven't got ghee, don't panic, just use butter. Ghee will give you a nuttier taste, but... There's nothing wrong with just using butter. And the other thing that you need is this. Aslan, you will be familiar with this. This is called a rotty towel. It is a solid piece of cast iron. Again, don't be panicked by that because if you've got a heavy base saucepan, it'll do the trick. Or a frying pan. A frying yeah. pan, a good, a good quality I frying pan. Did I say saucepan? I meant frying pan. Mm. So if you've got a heavy base on something, you'll get the same thing because all that is really as an is a really heavy solid bag. Mm, absolutely. 
I'm do just you find AJ. Do you find the flatbreads um, stick at all? Could you use a griddle pan for no. it, a heavy base griddle pan? Oh yeah, you could. You could okay. use just a flat griddle pan. I wouldn't use a not yeah, not this uh, you know, the great ones. Not a I'm, just, one. I'm just gonna bring just gonna bring a comment up. Michael says that I'm noticing the comment screen slowing down. People are paying attention. Impressive. <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean? You mean they don't normally pay attention on my shows? What are you talking about, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is really important. And the first time I made roti, it was with my husband and his friends were over, and they were saying, oh, make roti, make roti. And I said, okay, just tell me how to do it. And they said, it's flour, and it's water, and it's some 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 ghee. And I said, okay. So I just made it with flour and water and ghee. It was a disaster. They were like frisbees. Here's the knack. You must use boiling water when you make your roti. So just put a little hole. Is that better? No, that's perfectly fine. We can we can see where you are. Okay. And you just put a bit of boiling water in and mix it around. What you want is for it to be a doughy consistency. But the hot water, for some reason, just makes it much much, much softer. Do you know the reason for that, Aslan? No, I don't actually use hot water. That's quite interesting, you know. I generally use hot water with a little pinch of salt in it. Um, it, it with the flour, it tends to make the gluten come out of the flour and a lot more ah. pliable very quickly. Oh, is that it? Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. I'm so pleased you brought Ben along. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best on EZ Entertainment. Now, I'm not uh, putting a whole piece best. of butter in. Okay. Because sometimes, I don't know what you think, Ben, but sometimes it's been my experience that... Um, oh, wait, I've got, a birthday, I've got a birthday girl. I've got a birthday girl. Rita, I know I've wished you, but a very happy birthday to you once again. We do pay attention, she says. Happy birthday, wow. Rita. Happy birthday. Sorry, go on, AJ. What I was going to say to you is I've had roti that has so much ghee in it that it's almost translucent, and I can't, I just can't bear it. I, I'm, I I'm, 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 I'm curious. Back. I'm curious to see the roti you end up with because, of course, um, we have roti parata and we have that yeah. with, with white flour and brown flour. You've used white flour here. And, of course, there's chapati as well. So there are different types yeah. of roti in, in Indian cuisine. So... This is actually probably the day as when I possibly should have. Now, this is quite hot to touch. Mm. But you can see me rolling it, can you? Yes, we can. Yep. Was it, it was white flour, wasn't it? Yeah, a fine white flour. Okay. And that's a wheat flour, yes? Not a rice flour? Yep. It's not rice flour, it's just a wheat flour. Okay. So this is, this is what we call... This is what... Um, it's also called a paratha. It's made with white flour. In Singapore, it's called paratha. In Malaysia, it's called roti chanai. And we have our South Indian South Indian stall owners selling this. We eat this for breakfast. And they have yes. they have the dough, right? And they'll fling it like pizza, like that. It's it's really amazing to watch them at work. Okay, so what we've got is a snake. Yep. And then what we do is we just cut that into pieces that we know are going to make a okay. decent sized roti. Easy so far, flour, hot water, a little bit of ghee, mix it That's all up. It. Cool. Now, I always take one of the pieces and put it to the side because that's what I use for, um, sorry, that's what I use for buttering the pan. Ah, uh, yeah, that's very clever. <laughs> The pan gets incredibly hot. Mm. If you use a pastry brush, mm. you'll get you'll get a dreadful shock if it isn't pure bristle because it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, one more one more interruption and another birthday girl in the house. A ciao to all from Elena. Elena's in London. Happy birthday to you, Elena. Happy birthday, Elena. Happy birthday, Elena. Thank you for making the time to come and watch. Yes, she's she's Italian. She's Italian. She lives in London. Oh, okay. So this is incredibly soft. This is like really soft. It and is. That's what you get 
to use the hot water. So you need some flour on your bench, and this is where your um, this is where your wine bottle comes in. <laughs> So, for those of you who've just joined us in Australia, they do not use rolling pins. <laughs> their wine bottles are for. So. Only the Pinot Noir. Yes, yes, only the Pinot Noir. So, <laughs> all right. So, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ask. AJ's got white wine. Ben, what are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking an English beer. Hey, hey. An Old Speckled beer. Hen. So I'm now going to put that you can on. you can take the man out of England, but you can't take the English out of the man. Here, yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> All right. So so the, the, it goes on the um, greased um, griddle and. Um, and then I just put this in the gate. Okay. The okay. And it's can I just tell you this is a little bit like pikelets. The first like. one is never right. Mm, mm, mm. They always tend to burn the first one, so get a bit too crispy. Or my yeah. granny used to say, my my granny used to say that the first uh, whatever bread you're making, whatever roti you're making, or pancake even, it's always the the one that seasons the the griddle or the frying pan. Yeah, that's exactly right. The the French do yeah. exactly the same. The first one um, always gets put aside, and the rest are always fabulous. Ah, interesting. Now the other thing that you need to that will be helpful for you is when you make them, you don't want them to crisp up. So what I do generally mm -hmm. is I will get a piece of paper, a silver paper, aluminium foil, and I'll put that there and I will load them onto it and then cover it and they stay warm. Okay. So they don't Okay, uh, we have we have we have um someone Bruno Miguel Santos. I haven't got the comment up on the stream yet, but he's he's thinking. Ah, here we are. I knew I was in a Bollywood movie. No, dear, you are on com on the completely wrong end of the world. AJ's doing Fijian food. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I am doing Fijian food because that is sort of South Pacific, close to us, and. It's a place that's like my second home, so. Hey, we've got we've got we've got somebody who's who's um whom I've actually been aware of for a long time. Good evening from Greece. I don't know how to pronounce. Is that Nikos? Any idea, Ben? How do you pronounce that? N Nikos. Nico. 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 Hi. Thank you so much for commenting. Kala Nikta. Kala Spera. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's Kalanikta, isn't it? I think so. I think it's Kalanikta yeah, color, color, color in the night. It's okay. It's perfect rotting. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's that's really interesting, isn't it? That's um quite different from your usual Indian Indian bread, actually. Yeah, it's interesting, it's quite isn't it? Yeah. Thing compared it's to what, um, let me tell you, this is one of the things that happens in Fiji. Wow. But it's so easy, as well. It's so easy. And would they generally always use it for curry or would they use it for other things as well? No, they do this amazing thing for breakfast where you, um, where they do, like the men will eat 20 of these because again, they're huge. And they'll, they'll eat 20 of them. So well, they are, aren't they? Do is they do the roti with um, palm sugar and coconut cream. Oh yeah. They just layer it and that is a breakfast dish. Wow. That I can it's a dish that will make you put on kilos. I kilos bet. Days. But they, they have quite they work quite hard over there, so they work you know, physically they work quite hard. So I guess they get through it and they play a lot of rugby. Yeah, they're quite so, guys, um, aren't they, the Fijians? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, we've got a comment from um, Cook with Sally. She says hello. She says sorry. Oh, she can't. Um, she says hello. She says she doesn't put hot water, so this is a new one for her as well. Can um, you see how pliable it is? Yes, I, I, I do. I do like it's. It's. I must try that because I've never made this um, version ever before. So it's really interesting. Look, it's probably get... the most basic version on the planet, but for me it works. It's fantastic. I have to try it. Sally, get better soon. Too much. She's been decorating her kitchen. 
So too much, well, too, too much work. I thought that was the cooking equivalent of not taking a date because you were washing your hair, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> so that is as easy, easy, easy as it can be. Now, when it's a really good batch, um, and I don't think it's going to happen this morning, but, you know, you've got to remember I'm cooking at 6 a.m., so it's probably not my prime time. But when it's a really good batch, what will happen is it will split and it will puff up. Puff up, mm. Mm. I'm, I'm getting little bubbles, but I'm not getting them. Oh. My 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 grandfather used to will will get a will get a um, a tea towel and and press it down to help it puff up. Um, oh really? All, all along. Mm. But that that's chapati. That's what when he was doing chapati. Yeah, that, well, that, it's, mm. it's, this is like some. I know it's like some hybrid thing, but it's really really delicious. Just so you know. The curry smells divine and it's looking really, really good. Amazing. 25, mm. 26 minutes and she's made us a, a, a chicken curry and she's doing, um, she's done two or three rotis already. How cool is I'm that? Onto my, I'm just finishing off my third. Actually, you can see here, this is it's starting to, can you see the bubbles? Yes. Yes, it's yeah. popping up a bit. Mm. But, you know, as I said to you, it's like pikelets. Nothing ever goes really right until about the fourth one, and I don't know whether that's because that's when the pan is really hot or whatever. But you know, it's a delicious thing, and this, you know, fantastic. I love Namal, the texture. No, they really do look. They really do look lovely, AJ. Mm. That today it's curry and rocky for breakfast. Yes, so I, think okay I, 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 I think. I love think. Rocky no. and Namal did request. Namal did request a roti program ages ago, last year. So there you go, hey. Namal. Yes, he did. Now we've got um, hi, Maurice Thompson. Maurice Thompson, hi. Thanks, thanks for taking the time to say hello. I appreciate you watching. Yes. Ah, here we go. We've got a comment from um, um, Namal. Here we go. Let me bring it up. In my country, we add some coconut milk to the chicken curry, and we also add some shredded coconut to the roti. Also, interesting, shredded yes. coconut. Mm. Yes, um, and that's that more along the lines. And and also, I've done it so I've 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 done it so it's like like I put two together, and in the middle, it's almost like a. Uh, I put coconut and sultanas and. That's peshwari naan. Peshwari naan. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, the coconut thing is lovely. I have oh, a coconut that's thing later. That's so, a whole other so thing. let me let me. I'm 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 going to ask Namal a question actually. So Namal, so when you say you add shredded coconut to the roti, is that um, together with? I'm really curious to see um, to hear that. Be interesting. I'd be really interested to try that out. Yeah. It, I've done it as, and it's great. And if yeah. you've got a particularly spicy curry, it mm. just gives that that sweetness to it. It's really, really nice. Mm. <laughs> I'll see now. What are we on the the fourth one? Now it's starting to really pop. Cool. I, I where did I see a lime? I must have missed it. Where have you used the lime yet? Or um, I, see, I, don't I see some lime. Did it go in the curry, or? I probably will squeeze a bit over it at the end. Okay. Mm. In essence, oh, now can you see how this is really bubbling? Definitely, it's definitely puffing up. Yeah. yeah. AJ, mm. I just have always, a, um, a quick question. The one. Okay. When, when, when you started your curry, you used um, some olive oil. Um, could you use no, a, like a coconut oil instead? Yeah, I used a vegetable oil. But um, coconut oil is great, and I do use it. But what I find with the coconut oil, and it's such a healthy choice, but if you use the coconut oil, you can find that it's it's actually... Um, overpowering? It can overpower. Mm. It can overpower the flavours, mm. which sounds ridiculous given it's a curry. But no, no, it is a very strong, a strong oil to cook through. with. It does come through, and doesn't I just it? Find that it? I just find that... Um, I find it can be too overpowering, and for mm. that reason alone, I tend to not use it. 
Yeah, I, I use a lot of coconut oil with um, when I'm cooking pancakes for my daughter. Um, obviously, because it is so overpowering, she she'll eat that every time, you know, because she loves the coconut. She loves the aroma from it. And also, she's 18 months old, so if that's the way her palate develops, she'll be fine. Yeah. So yeah. I just oh, um, I uh, Namal wants me to repeat my question. Um, so you said you use shredded coconut in the roti. How do you add the shredded coconut with the dough itself? So do you? Yes. Uh, I've done it with the dough. Okay, so that's what AJ does. Is that how they do it in Sri Lanka, Namal? So. Uh, so I just learned today. Um, that children have a whole lot more taste, um, what, what do you call them, senses? Receptors. No. Buds, buds. Buds. Yeah. Taste buds, thank you. A whole lot more taste buds than adults, and these taste buds actually die off as they grow older, which is why they are so much more sensitive to food and why they don't like a whole lot more food or like them as a kid. I, mean, I, I, I find that my, my youngest... She she really does like flavors which are really really strong. Um, we eat quite a lot of cacao beans, um, just raw. Um, and even 18 months old, she she'll eat them. Really? And she really? absolutely loves them, you know. And you give her a piece of milk chocolate, which that's not very often in my house, to be quite honest. Um, but she she will turn her nose up at that. She will prefer something a lot more dark, a lot more with a brute flavor. Ah, that's interesting. So maybe she has a naturally, she has a, a more savoury palate. Yeah, I think she probably does. Um, yeah. My niece was obsessed by anything sweet, and that was from dot, the day dot. And okay. She wasn't given lots of sweets, but she was obsessed by sweet. Whereas I've always had a savoury palate. Yeah, so I'm, I think, I'm more savoury than I am sweet. I must admit. This is really, you know. When people tell me that they couldn't be bothered cooking or it's, it's too hard or whatever, what I want to show people is this this isn't hard. This mm. is really, really easy cooking. And mm. it's such a good option to ordering in or, you know, going out for food. I mean, but also, that, also AJ, that is a really, really beautiful curry. Also, AJ, you've used very, you haven't used, um, you know, lots and lots of ingredients, but you've produced something no. so flavoursome um, and, and really made the most of your ingredients. But that's, for me, I believe that food should, you should celebrate what the food is. Like this, this little chicken, that mm. is the most extraordinary little thing. And, and, oh, that's what I wanted to say. My next show, which is on the uh, 15th, Asla? Yes, it is. In two weeks. AJ, AJ was away, so she didn't have it last month, so we're making up for it twice this month. Yes, it is. But I, but I love cooking, so that's fine. And the exciting thing for that show is that the actual producer of these chickens is going to be on that show, and we're going to do a duck dish together. Excellent. So she will be down in Sydney. So she will be here. At 6 a.m. So she's very committed to her product, and we're we're going mm -hmm. to talk about um, uh, you know humane choice and free range chicken and and well we won't talk about that for too long because it could you know be a bit dry. But um, we're going to do um, either it should be very exciting. It's it's like a um, a harissa buttermilk chicken. Lovely, lovely. Looking, looking forward to it. Are you doing? Try and use the duck. So that would be great having the producer. Are you doing chicken or duck? Did you say duck? I I want to do the harissa buttermilk duck, but um, it 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 may end up being the chicken because the duck may just be too fatty to do it, even if I take the skin off. Okay, I have to say, if you do do the duck, mind your bowels. I can I just tell you all the I I can't tell you, but the tweet was something about She um, missed it, Ben. Yeah, I know, I see. No, I didn't miss it. I didn't tell you exactly what happened to me this week. I said that I had found some amazing duck misspelt and that I was having the best time. <laughs> she was in a conversation. I know all about that. And my dad put the U and the I next to each other on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh dear. So it'll be really interesting to see if you did duck. Um, obviously, I live in the southwest of France, um, which is quite famous for duck. Um, they do Margaret de Canard here, which is the duck breast with um, its corn fed. Um, so the, the, the layer of fat, fat on it is really, really big, um, really, really yeah. thick. Um, and it's, it's the most superb thing to cook. And obviously, when I do my show for Aslin, um, it's something that I wanted to cook as well. Um, duck with blueberries is, is a really good um, wow. combination. I, I can't wait for, for, for you to start cooking for us. Oh, I really can't wait then myself. I, I think that will be great. And I went to a Canada La Press dinner last, last year. Okay. Which was awesome. But the oh. best ducks are uh, Pekin ducks, which are P-E-K-I-N. And interesting duck fact, Peking duck, is when it becomes the dish. Prior to that, it's P E K I N, and the number okay. of people who get that wrong. Is mm, they, use, they use a breed of duck which is an Indian runner, isn't it, for the Peking duck? No. Is no, that is that? It's a, uh, what are the ones that hiss? It's not an Indian runner, anyway. But Beth can tell you all about that. I mean, you know, Ben, would you like to come on the show next time? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm more than welcome. Yeah, exactly. I've really enjoyed tonight. No, you, it's, it's been... Yeah, okay. She's, she's seriously one of the best producers. But anyway... Oh, it'd be really nice to ask some this. questions. Yeah. Do you rear ducks then? I know you have pigs. Do you have ducks? No, we have, we have um, pigs and chickens at the moment. Um, okay. And I turn over 40 chickens uh, every sort of 15 weeks or so. Um, wow. And obviously the pigs, they take a little bit longer. Um, and we sort of only grow organic, sort of free range. Um, mm. I would like to do ducks, but there's mm. so many people doing it in my region. Um, okay. Competition is quite... Um... Yeah, and, and also to, to feed the ducks in the way that... Um, to, to get the best out of the meat. It's very expensive. Um, okay. And a lot of the French here, they actually put like a funnel... Uh, into Downton, mm. into the mm. Forced, when we produce fragua. Mm. And, and ethically, I, I my you. way, I, I'm not really, no. uh, I don't agree no. so much with that. No. Mm. Can I just ask you, Ben, you're, um, so you're, you're doing pigs as well? Yep. Yeah, I went to an amazing place called Near River, and they've got beautiful, beautiful pig. And um, I'll be actually doing spices for. Uh, it looks like I'll be doing spices for his. Um, oops. Excellent. Um, I'll be doing spices for his sausages. I'll be doing the spice mix, one of the spice mixes. Um, so I'll cook with some of his pork as well. You would love Australia because we've got this amazing industry where it's all about food miles. It's all about um, ethical treatment, and and people now start to eat, uh, start to. Ask about the provenance of food. Yes, yeah, and that's really how it should be. Now, it is. It's very important. It's very. You, what we shouldn't we shouldn't be eating meat which you know comes over a hundred kilometers from one place to the next. You know, there's so that, much locally that's beautiful in food. In England, but in Australia, that's not possible. Okay. That's fantastic. Right. right. So you're 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 serving up now. So um, we've got the curry all done. Mm. Cooked, so, cooked, in, cooked in 35 minutes. That's pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. Yes. So all I would probably do is serve a little bit of, I'd probably put lime over the top, only because it's always good. So is the, can, can, can we find the recipe, um, either one I or both? Recipe up, Aslan. I just didn't put it up before I cooked. Okay, yeah. AJ does it differently from everybody else. She puts the recipe on after. That looks lovely. That's gorgeous. It does look now, absolutely beautiful. Now, 25 minutes, people, why order out or order in? One more time, AJ. Back up, back up, AJ. I'm just going to take a photo. Back up again, please. Thanks. That's it. Cool. Done. Thank you. The other thing that I would recommend that I forgot, because as I said, I've been away for 10 days and I came back and my coriander's not looking great. Um, the only thing that I would probably recommend to you is to chopping up and putting through some coriander. Mm. Okay. Or cilantro, as some people call it. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Fantastic. That was so. That was so good. It was. It was easy. I. I am. I am definitely. Definitely going to try making that bread. I. I love how easy and 
different in look, texture. It's so soft and it doesn't harden up, hasn't it? It's, it was the most incredible map mm. that somebody told me. It's, well, it's really nice. It's really nice to see you do a curry, um, and there not be you know a whole plate of rice with it as well. Is oh, it? Yeah. Mm. Rice or roti? I go roti every time. Yeah, I go roti. I think. Yeah, I'm. I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah, but not naans, you know. But not 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 so much naans. I, I'm definitely a, a more more of the paratha and the chapati with curry rather than naans. Yeah, the flatbreads are the definitely a lot more um, flavoursome. That's right. Yeah. And, and also, I find it's very, none can be quite heavy because it's got the yeast and it's risen and it's just, you know, it's really heavy. Whereas these, I regret to inform you, once you start making these, you'll start waking up early to make them for breakfast. That's it. It's it's great in the jam. That, it looks like an extra kilometre on my run every day then, just for those <laughs> Cool. Excellent. That was really, really good, AJ. Um, that was super quick, super easy, and delicious. I'm very sure it's delicious. Right, we're going to get AJ to take us out. But before that, let's go say goodbye to Ben. It's been really good having you. Um, yeah, your your views and your opinions and your ideas have been. It's been uh, uh, very, very good having you on the show. Brilliant. I've Thank you ever so much for your invitation, Aslin. And um, anytime, I really would like to um, come on and cook soon. Um, and you know, really, really get involved. Cool. Thanks for coming on because I've really, really enjoyed having you on, and hopefully you'll be back for the the next the next one. Oh, definitely. I'll make sure that I'm there. And um, it was really nice to meet you too, and really nice to see Yay. someone else. Cook. Excellent. So we'll have we'll have Ben in two weeks, and um, next Sunday we've got um, Cook with Sally cooking from Bristol. And um, we've got a comment from David McRae who says that I love her use of everyday things in her kitchen. Thanks, David. Thanks for watching as well. Um, to to everybody in the audience um, today, tonight, tonight, my time. Thank you so much for popping in and watching. For those of you in the US, thanks for watching us. Is the thanks Super Bowl finished? Yeah, I have no idea. Is it finished? Has it started? I don't know. It's not football. So um, right. So that's it. AJ will be back in two weeks. I'm just gonna let AJ take us out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found this interesting. I'll put the recipe up and hopefully you can make it and post some photos of what you've made. I'd love to see them. Great. Thank uh, you so much. See you in a couple of weeks.